On today's episode, we'll be talking about my continued progress on my Molly sweater, as well as a new cast on, and unfortunately, some rigid heddle loom woes. I'm Marina and this is Pineapple Knits. This is my channel dedicated to knitting, spinning, and weaving. You can connect with me on social media at Pineapple Yarn and you can connect with me on my website at pineappleyarn.com. Thank you so much for joining me again this week and to all my new viewers and of course my returning viewers. I'm so happy that we're here chatting about knitting, spinning, weaving, all of these crafty things. I'm coming to you from coastal South Carolina and it has just been gorgeous weather this morning. I, I could just feel the hint, a hint of cool air. It was shocking and it, it probably wasn't that cool, but I do believe a little bit of fall is in the air. So that's really fun, um, you know, something to look forward to. I love warm weather, but fall really is absolutely gorgeous. So uh, that was kind of fun this morning to feel just that little crispness. There, it's not crisp, it's, very, it's still very humid, <laughs> but it was really fun feeling that. But again, Odyssey shawl on the mannequin. I have not changed it. It's just, it's just the way it is. It's gonna be there for a while, I think. <laughs> but let's jump into my project. So I've continued to knit on the Molly sweater this week. This is a pattern by Julie Weisenberger, who is Coco Knits. She is such a great designer, and this is her first pattern that I have attempted knitting and it's been really interesting. I'm carrying this in my fun gray and white sheep project bag that I made a while back. I had some of these in the shop. I may have some smaller sizes now in the shop, but this is the sweater. It is, gl it's glowing. It really is. <laughs> this is uh, one of my yarns, pineapple yarn, on the Lani DK base, and it's in the color Glowworm, which is very appropriate. So here is what I have so far. I really made quite a bit of progress this week. I went past the yoke, and right now what I'm doing, I'm working on hip increases. So I have maybe a couple more inches to go, but that really is about it. So what I want to do, um, I set out that I wanted this sweater to hit at my high hip, and so I will be modifying the pattern a little bit. I did go down a needle size in the pattern, which I always do, <laughs> but so far so good. Um, this has been a really great pattern, and you know, this past week I have just been doing mostly plain stockinette, so just the body with those few increases that I mentioned but very, very soon I will hit the hem and then onto the sleeves. This is just a really beautiful color though. I'm so excited to wear this, which is giving me extra motivation to knit it. The yoke construction was very interesting. I've never knit a yoke like this before. And so for those of you who have knit Coco Knits patterns, I, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> But it was just, it's a very interesting, um, it's, it's just a very interesting construction method. And it's supposed to give a better fitting sleeve for a top-down sweater. So um, the sleeve is constructed with this, uh, almost like a strip of fabric right here. And then the increases happen across the sleeve cap. So instead of having like a rounded yoke like most top-down sweaters are uh, that are knit in the round, it actually has almost a set-in sleeve, which is really nice, and it just fits better. It really does. Um, so it's very interesting. I'll be interested to see how much I wear this sweater as opposed to other top-down knitted sweaters just because of the fit and the comfort. Um, I think this is gonna fit really awesome though. So what I did, 
I am using a DK weight yarn and I am knitting the second size. The pattern calls for a worsted. I decided to go uh, with a DK because I had it handy to be honest. And so that's the sweater this week. Not a lot of new things to talk about, but the color is just fabulous and the pattern has been really great so far. I couldn't help but cast something new on this week after I'd finished my Emma top and I decided to cast on a cold weather accessory. I just wanted something very uh, simple, very fast, and so um, I pulled out one of my old Hawaiian project bags. Really, really love these. I used to sew a lot of these with um, beautiful fabric that I would um, pick up in Hawaii. But this is called Lines, I believe, or Lines, lines Mittens. And I'll show you because I actually printed off the pattern. And this is a very simple collar work pattern from Tin Can Knits. And I have had this for quite a while and never knit them up. <laughs> but it's a two color collar work pattern. And the reason I chose this is because I wanted to use some yarn in my stash. So a really sweet customer of mine um, and friend actually sent me this yarn and I've had it in my stash for a bit and thought it might be cool to knit up because it had some autumnal colors in it. Uh, this is from Hedgehog Fibers. I'm pretty sure it was one of their club colorways called Witch Hunter and it's predominantly black and orange but it has speckles of like greens and yellows and pops of pink so that's kind of fun and I think this would be and it is beautiful knit up by itself I'll show you what I have so far but I'm not into orange and black it's just not my it's not my color aesthetic so what I did is I added one of my yarns that I already had caked up this is the colorway very close to coral conch that I currently have in the shop. It's kind of a neon coral or a neon peach colorway. And I already had this caked up and I thought the two looked great together. So I went for it. <laughs> and here is the first one that I basically have done. I just need to do the thumb but I think they turned out so cool. The background is this variegated orange and black colorway and then the lines are all made out of this um, coral conch colorway of mine and I just think it turned out so cool. So here's a close-up of the mitten and you can see here is the colorway, uh, the background colorway knitted up just by itself. But then when you introduce this coral color, it really pops, you can see the lines. So I knew that the color work wouldn't be completely, I guess, visible by itself, but I just wanted to introduce some lighter, brighter shades into this. One really neat thing about this pattern is it starts off with these really long lines and then it kind of gets pixelated at the very top. So you can see all these little tiny uh, bits here at the top. I just think that's really just such a neat thing about this pattern. So, so far this project is really coming along well. I personally love the way the variegation of the background yarn looks with the tonal yarn that all the lines are knit from. I just, I really, really like it. It really lightened up this dark colored yarn and really just gave it a new look, which I think is neat. Plus this is a great size pattern to practice color work. And I haven't done any color work in at least a year, year and a half, two years. And so it's always great to get a little extra practice and this is so simple, just this two color, color work and the charts are all very, very simple. So this is a really great pattern. So, so far this is really nice and it's just so nice to have some progress on a smaller pattern when I'm knitting up a large pattern like a sweater. 
So all, nearly one mitten's done. I actually need to find my double pointed needles for this thumb. <laughs> That's why I haven't done it yet, but I have cast on the cuff. So pretty soon, most likely next week, these will be done. Um, and I will show you when they're totally done. I'm knitting up the adult medium size because I figured that would just be a really good all around size in case I decide to gift them. I'm gonna be honest, I don't really have a lot of use for mittens here. <laughs> um, so I may gift them, I don't know what I'll do. But they've been really fun to knit up and I love the variegated yarn in these. So those are my current knitting projects. I don't have any spinning going on, though I do need to ply up some yarn. So maybe I will work on that in the next couple of days. We'll see what happens. Um, I've really been focusing on knitting and weaving lately though. And unfortunately, I have bad news with my loom. I cannot even believe this happened because last week, if you watched last week's episode, you'll remember me talking about how I would like to get a new loom. I'd like a loom that can uh, sustain high tensions because I knew rigid huddle looms weren't made for that and you could damage the loom. And so I've always been very conscientious actually of, of not over tightening um, the beams, the front beam and the back beam on my loom. Um, I knew if I had a too tight of a warp, it could damage my loom. And uh, so this weekend, this past weekend, I was weaving up my fall inspired table runner, which I chatted about last week. And something was wrong with the beam. It was very loose, the, the front beam. And sure enough, I found at least two cracks in the beam where it is fastened on the side. And uh, there may even be three cracks, I'm not really sure. Obviously I'm really, I'm really bummed out about it, but I wanna finish my current project before I try and fix it. And so um, I kind of thought about how I was going to fix it and sell, at least salvage my project what I think I'm going to do is actually take uh, some non-slip fabric of some kind, like a shelf liner or something like that, and wrap it around the part of my beam that has the cracks, and then um, attach, fasten a hose clamp around it just so it cinches in real tight. And hopefully that will keep it from cracking anymore so I can finish my project. Luckily, my project is wool, so it's a little more elastic. It's, I feel like it's a little more, it's easier on a rigid huddle loom versus cotton or something that doesn't stretch. So hopefully that will kind of help it limp along to the end. <laughs> um, and then I think I'm going to try and glue it. One wood glue that I really, really love for uh, a really secure join is Gorilla Wood Glue. It's like Gorilla Glue, but I th it, maybe it's a different formulation for wood. I'm not really sure, but it works great. So I think I'm going to use that along with the hose clamp and really tighten up that hose clamp um, so it almost works as a clamp to, <laughs> to really glue it and get it secure. Otherwise, I don't really know what I'm going to do. Um, I can't imagine that a if I special order a beam, a front beam from Kromsky, that it's going to be, um, I can imagine that it's probably going to be pretty pricey. And yeah, I just, I can't believe that I actually said it out loud and then it happened. It's, I can't believe it. It's really disappointing, honestly. I knew that there was always that possibility with rigid heddles that you have to be careful not to over tighten your warp and I've always been very conscientious about it and it's still cracked so I'm super disappointed and um, hopefully I'll be able to finish this weaving project and then from there I'll just have to figure out what to do. But the two yarns I decided to weave with are, um, one is very old, one of my very first <laughs> um, spinning projects the other one is a newer spinning project. So the first one is actually from fiber that I purchased from Jinx Yarns. So 
Many of you will know this company. She was great. She's such a great dyer, but um, unfortunately isn't dying anymore. And it's a really beautiful blend of like reds and different autumnal colors, but I feel like there's a lot of red in it and burgundy type colors. And then the other skein that I decided to use in the project is one, one fiber that I dyed maybe last year, it's called Spiced Rum, and I believe it's on Polworth. I didn't write a tag with any kind of numbers or anything, I have no idea. But it's really pretty, it has a um, really, really deep wine burgundy color along with uh, pops of other colors. So I think the two, um, as they're different, but they go really well together. So what I'm doing is I'm going to do basically um, blocks of each color and I'm just doing a plain weave and they're really a great, I think they're both about a DK weight. So I'm getting a really nice balanced weave where I can see that beautiful uh, warp as well as see the beautiful hand spun weft as well. Um, it's not a very big project. It's not as wide as my last weaving project, which was the entire advent calendar from Hedgehog Fibers. <laughs> so um, it'll be a really nice, easy, uh, fast weave. Hopefully my loom will hold until then. Um, fingers crossed on that. So that is it for my projects this week. I've just been busy dyeing up your clubs for September. So thank you so much if you ordered a club. They will be on your way by September 10th and they're going to be so gorgeous. And I'm busy working on your advent calendars as well. So lots of stuff going on here in the studio. But other than that, that's about it. Thank you so much for joining me this week. If you enjoyed this episode, I'd love if you'd give it a thumbs up. I'll see you again next week with another episode. Until then, I hope you have an awesome day. <laughs> Bye.